Hello there, my name is Susie Omblade and I'm happy to welcome you to another watercolor process video. This time of a castle I painted in late December last year. And it'll be my first video in 2020. You'll see how it was done from start to finish with a bit of explanation on techniques and also a bit of art history. Now here I already pre-wetted the paper to make sure that the clouds I'm doing uh, will not have nice soft edges. Um, I didn't want to have any crisp lines on the clouds for this particular piece. And I kind of just mess with it with all the colors that I'm using, which is currently uh, phthalo blue and just right there I used a uh, ultramarine. And then in just a moment I'll be mixing up a color of alizarin crimson and ultramarine to make more of a purple color. Yeah, there it is, right there. So I was thinking kind of a soft sunset originally. As if there's a, uh, a storm that could potentially come in the evening of this piece, but and if you saw the paintbrush go over a white triangle right there, that is actually a sailboat that I'm going to leave towards the end. Oh, and right there, <laughs> I used way too much alizarin crimson. It was just way too much. But, you know, sometimes happy accidents can happen. So I decided to just keep going with it. You can always dilute a color if it's way too much. You can always dilute it. So I went in with more ultramarine and other colors, and by this time, I realized that it started to look a little bit like Thomas Kincaid, like all of his work. And for those of you who don't know who Thomas Kincaid is, I'm pretty sure that you've seen his work somewhere. Uh, it's kind of hard to go anywhere, especially if you're looking at puzzles or uh, calendars, to not see his work featured somewhere. He was actually, in 2012, when he passed away, Thomas Kincaid was known as the painter of light and was reported to be the most well-known commercial artist in America. So much so that the walls of one out of every 20 American households would have his work featured in the household. So just goes to show that you know, it doesn't matter if you are a commercial artist or a self-made artist who does just commissions, you can be successful. It's it's possible. Um, and I think right now the goal of just any artist is to make money. Um, I know that that's certainly a goal of mine. If I could have a steady income of passive income, where I don't have to paint a picture every single time to get money, um, that's what he did. That's what commercial artists essentially do. They do a bunch of work to start, and then they get an income constantly from selling prints, selling puzzles like Thomas Kincaid did. Um, just going commercial is a great way to get that passive income. And I don't think it's necessarily, it's not selling out. It's, it's making a living. And in this day and age where it's, it's so hard to make a living in any shape or form, especially when you're working a minimum wage job, passive income is a lifesaver. It really is. I mean, it could eventually accumulate to enough to potentially pay a few of your bills or even all of them um, if you have enough under your belt and available online or in stores. And hopefully, maybe someday I'll be able to get there. Right here, there's just, you know, a bunch of... It's these beautiful colors of phthalo blue, pinks, purples, a little bit of that not cadmium yellow, I, that would have been too bright. So instead I used a, uh, a yellow ochre. But you always, when they're working with water, you want to use those colors reflected in the water. So I do that base layer of those reflected colors. And you always want to show whatever's in the background, like near the water, you're going to want to have that reflected as well. So right now I'm just working on the... Uh, 
the mountains behind the castle. And here you'll see the second layer after the first layer dried. Uh, it's going to be more of a, um, oh, let's see, what do they use here? It's more like a turquoise. Yeah, it was a turquoise by Windsor & Newton that I'm using here. And sometimes I use a little too much, so don't be afraid to kind of dab it up a little bit with a paper towel. And I did outline that ship, that sailboat, with the masking medium fluid. So don't, don't worry about going over it if you have that fluid. But if you don't, it's not hard to paint around something if you really want to. Like for the reflection of the sailboat, that's what I did. I, I painted around that section and kind of dabbed it a bit with the paper just so that I wouldn't have as a harsh line. The harsh line will be for the actual sailboat sail because I used the masking fluid. But below that, I just painted around it and I dabbed it to make sure it's a little softer because you know any kind of reflection is going to be softened. We're kind of turning the subject back to uh, the artist Thomas Kincaid, which this painting is definitely starting to look like. He worked mostly in acrylics or he had a print and then to add depth on top of that he would use oils. So here I did something a little bit different than what I normally do is I put some of the reflection in before I did the background. So here I'm doing the rocky cliffs with, that the castle is sitting on. Most of, the, most of the time I actually paint those rocky cliffs first and then I do the reflection. But I kind of went backwards on this one just because I knew the direction I was going. Yeah, it's going to take some of that glue off, that masking fluid. Very satisfying process. Here I'm going in with a yellow ochre to get some of that warm sunlight in the magic five o'clock time of day. And then also going in with a burnt umber for a very dark contrast because it's going to be rocks that this castle's sitting on, so I want to make sure that it's got some good contrast. Then I got some of the burnt umber mixed with a little bit of the green and then some of the ultramarine colors. Putting in this castle here, um, this little bridge in order to get to the castle. It's more of a grayish purple, similar to the background of the mountains behind it, but I wanted it to be a little bit more bold, stick out further. And I kind of forgot to record uh, the uh, foreground here of the rocks and stuff of the shoreline, but that's okay. I'll get that next time I do a piece. And there's my cat. <laughs> there she is again. My cat's name is Latte. She is, uh, we believe, Siamese. Uh, she's got cross eyes. She likes to meow after she gets a meal. And on the painting here, I, st I wanted to put in a blue roof because I, I love to put in a red roof. Meow. Uh, <laughs> put in a red roof. But here I wanted a blue roof instead because you know, something different. And after I did the blue roof, I realized it looked a little bit like the uh, Little Mermaid castle that Prince Eric has. <laughs> that was not done on purpose. But, you know, Thomas Kincaid, you know, going back to him, he actually did a whole bunch of paintings for Disney. He did whole bunches of them. I mean, like You can actually see so many different puzzles that have Disney ins inspiration in there and characters running around. So I guess, you know. I'm going with the Thomas Kincaid theme, even by accident, to kind of give a nod to the Prince Eric castle. There's a couple uh, seagulls way in the distance there, sounding my name with gouache. I also did a few of those waves with gouache too. 
Oh, this part's so satisfying. Pulling off the tape. And this is a acid-free tape um, that you can get at any art store. It costs a little bit more, so I typically... <laughs> Before this, I would actually use blue tape, which... Blue painter's tape works just fine. But I think for a video, it's nicer to have that white border instead uh, while painting, so it's less distracting. Yeah, and um, here's the piece, and I, thank you for watching. Um, I will be back again um, next week or the week after with a small painting of, well, maybe the Superstition Mountain again. I, I haven't done that in a while. And um, I just had a request to do that. So thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoy and see you next time.